Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where I am getting in the mood for spooky season with a new project for the ON30 Gruesome Gulch layout. Some of you may recall that last year I built a pair of excursion cars for the Gruesome Gulch layout using some roundhouse HO scale shorty coaches as the starting point. Well, today I want to do the same kind of thing, but instead of excursion cars, we're going to build a creepy combine. Back in the excursion car build video, I said these uh, roundhouse coaches are ubiquitous, and they are. There are literally thousands of them out there running on HO layouts or stashed away in boxes in the attic or available from resellers on eBay. So they're not hard to find at all, and they do make a very fun starting point for an ON30 car. In HO scale, these are 39-foot cars, but in O scale, that's going to translate to about 19 feet. <laughs> these blue boxes bring back a lot of memories. Here's one that hasn't been assembled yet. This one's for the uh, Virginia and Truckee coach, but either the coach or the com there was a coach, a combine, a baggage car, a business car, any of them will work for this kind of project. I've also got some, uh, some KD couplers that I'm going to add to it. And where's the frame? Here it is. This is the first thing we need to modify. The first thing I need to do is remove the HO scale steps. And fortunately, this is some pretty soft plastic, so those are easy to cut off. Next, I want to remove the end beams right where they meet the platform. Now I want to sand those ends as straight and flush as I can get them. I'm going to fatten it up a little bit by gluing some O scale 2x4s on each side. Now I've cut a pair of new 4x6 end beams and those need to be notched down about, oh, only about a 64th of an inch to uh, clear the coupler pocket. Now I use some thick CA, glue those on the ends, lining them up with the coupler pocket. Now I want to create some new end platforms using these 1x8 planks. I'm going to go ahead and use the queen posts and truss rods and air brake detail from the kit to detail the underbody. And I'm going to use the thread from the kit to model the truss rods. It's a very old technique that still works perfectly well. Tie the knot in this end. Just got to be able to pull it nice and tight. I like to add a little drop of CA every place that the string makes contact with the plastic. And when you're all done, it's going to look a lot like that. I'm going to use the weights from the kit also. No reason not to. They uh, Put the weight right where you need it, right over the uh, trucks. Make the car track really nicely. Now I need to cut the floor out of this car, out of the car body. I need I need the floor, but not the rest of it. And the reason for that is that the trucks actually mount to these pegs, which are molded into the floor. So. Just need to do a little dissection, cut the walls off, sand the floor square, and then I can glue that on top of the weights. And now I can paint all of this, plus the Delrin trucks, uh, flat black. So in addition to using the frame and the trucks from the roundhouse kit, I also want to use the clear story roof, just like I did on the excursion cars. So all I really have to do is build all the stuff in between. And to that end, I have designed and cut some parts for the car body. This is out of some 25 one thousandth of an inch thick laser board. I think uh, the base walls are going to be gray, and then this, these trim pieces are going to be the same blue that I did the excursion cars in. So I'm also building up these doors where the windows look an awful lot like uh, toe pincher coffins, which is kind of an ongoing design motif for Gruesome Gulch. 
Now I can start assembling all these pieces using some yellow glue. Doors fit in like this. And then this trim piece goes on like this, right over the top. Just line that up with the, the ends and the window openings. Then adding some bracing to the interior, and this is just some scrap 3x6 that I had lying around. Where's my brush? There it is. And this is to just strengthen the walls and to help them lay flat. They, they kind of want to curl up just a little bit. Before I start assembling the walls of the car together, I want to glaze the windows first because it'll be much harder to get to them once it's all together. So I've cut some uh, clear acetate to fit, but I want the windows to be fogged because all you're going to be able to see from inside is kind of an eerie glow. So to fog the windows, I've got some uh, Avery label paper, which has a nice kind of fogged matte finish to it. need to trim the excess off. Now I'll apply some Zap Canopy glue around the window frames and drop that in with the shiny side out. And there are your fogged windows. Now I want to add some uh, handles to the doors. I've got some music wire here that I have bent to shape. I'm just drilling a couple of holes. I've got a number 70 bit in my pin vise. Now I'll show you a little trick I learned for doing this. Rather than cut this piece off short, I'm going to just take the whole wire, put it right through. Then I can line this up. Then I can just CA this into place from the back and trim it off once the glue's dry. Here I've put the end walls together in pretty much exactly the same way, right down to the fogged windows. But this time I'm using a track nail for a doorknob. Now I should be able to put all four of these walls together. Clamp that with my fingers for a minute or two. Now for the other side. Make sure that is lined up square. Looks pretty good. Now for more finger clamping for a few minutes. I needed to add a beam across the top here to keep those sides from bowing inwards. I still wanted to bow in a little bit. And I need to uh, make a slight modification to the clear story roof. I cut about an eighth of an inch off each side of these tabs so it will fit snugly down inside of here. All right, so far so good. One of the things that's the most fun about doing something dark and spooky like this is that I get to weather the heck out of it. Right now I'm using my watercolors I like to do a lot of weathering with watercolors. This is a mixture of burnt sienna and cobalt blue. And I mix them together right in here in different quantities. If I want a warmer gray, I use more burnt sienna. If I want a cooler gray, I use more cobalt blue. And then I'm just going around and kind of sticking this back in the corners like that. Maybe picking out individual boards here and there, making some darker than others. It's all pretty easy to do with watercolors. And since this was originally painted with enamels, uh, of course it's not gonna it's not gonna react with the paint underneath. It's just gonna sit on top. And uh, the great thing about watercolors too is if you mess it up, you can just get a little water on there and 
wipe it off. Start again. What I'm going for here is the look of a passenger car that you wouldn't want to get into. <laughs> you take one look and go, nope. All right, I like that. Nice and grimy. So now I'm going to dry brush on some granite gray. Mostly on the blue parts. Down here along the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and hit the trucks and the undercarriage of the car too while I've got this paint out. I think I'll go ahead and add some dry transfer numbers to the car too. The way I like to do this is cut the number off the sheet and uh, put a piece of scotch tape over it. That makes it much easier to position the letter or number where I want it before I rub it into place. Someone asked me why I didn't put the letter on first and then weather the car. And the answer to that is, well, if you're using water slide decals, yes, that's the way to do it. But if you're using dry transfers, if you want to do most of the weathering first. Otherwise, all that brushing around with different materials, particularly dry brushing, will lift the letter off. And you don't want that. So I'll go back and then tone these numbers down with uh, chalks when I do the final, final weathering on the car. Now I want to add some name boards up here at the top of the car saying Gruesome Gulch Railroad. And um, the way I'm going to do it, I've already uh, laser cut some boards that will uh, fit up here like so. And what I want to do, I've got a printout of the name Gruesome Gulch Railroad, which is the same width as this. And I'm going to very carefully cut those out and glue them onto the boards. And so basically, it's going to be paper. It'll be paper sign. But nobody will ever know except for you and me. And now I want to basically paint some diluted white glue onto this. Now I lay this right on the top. All right. Set that aside to dry for a second and we'll do the other one. You might have noticed that I did not cut the uh, paper printout to match the profile of the boards. And that's because I, I wanted black all the way to the edges. I didn't want any white paper showing uh, at the edge which would inevitably happen if you tried to match this profile. So it's, it's better to just uh, make it a little oversized and glue it on and then cut it out from behind, which is what I'm doing now. And that's really kind of the trickiest part of this whole project, this whole process. Just got to make sure you have a nice and sharp, brand new number 11 blade in your knife. And go around from the back and cut it out. And with that done, just need to come in from the back and paint all of the edges flat black with some acrylic paint. Now that gets glued onto this. Just like so. Now I could just paint the back side of these flat black also so everything matches. Okay, now I want to add some lighting to the interior of the car. And I want it to be battery powered. I'm not going to use track power for the lighting because it's it can be a little unreliable unless I wanted to put a decoder in there and I, I don't want to go to that much trouble, quite frankly. Uh, so I'm going to use one of these dollar store votive candles. And I've done this before. I did it in the little shorty combine uh, for Thunder Mesa. So I'm going to do it again here. But 
I don't want it to be flickering yellow. I actually want it to be eerie green. I want it to be green inside, have a kind of a green, ghostly, otherworldly glow coming through the windows. So all I really need from this is the housing, the, um, the battery case and the switch. And I'm going to trade out the LED that's in here. I've already taken one apart here. So they're, they're really basic the way they're put together. I'll show you as I replace this yellow LED with a green one. So this is a green diffused LED. Um, same size as this one. It's about a five millimeter. So the positive lead gets bent straight out like that at a 90 degree. So this can come down and the negative goes in here. And this gets bent down between these slots. And this piece for the negative pickup also acts as a clamp, clamps that into place. That'll do it. I'll just trim that off. Hey, it works. So now I just need to mount this inside so that all I need to do is take the roof off and on to uh, turn it off and on. <laughs> Back on the frame, I want to add some end railings. And these are the same ones I made for the excursion cars, also cut from some 25 thou laser board. Just going to glue these right onto the end beams on each side. I'm going to be using the brake wheels from the roundhouse kit. I mean, they're a little small, but you know, it's kind of a small car. Uh, but I am remaking new staves for them out of some 25 thou music wire. Just gluing the wheels to the top of the wire. Paint those flat black. Now these end rails have got some holes pre-cut in them and I need to drill those a little bit deeper into that end beam so I can put some nut bolt washer castings in there. I'm assembling the side steps, and these are made from some 25 thou laser board, just like the rest of the car. The design's a little unusual for a combine or passenger coach in that uh, they're connected by an iron, iron bar that runs down the side of the car. That's a design element from the original Gruesome Gulch excursion cars that I made, and I wanted it to carry over here. I wanted it to look like they have a, a family resemblance, like they were made by the same otherworldly car foundry. <laughs> now I can add those brake wheels. Paint's dry on those. I want to add a figure to the rear platform, and since this is Gruesome Gulch, he's going to be a skeleton. And I'm using some acrylic modeling paste to uh, add some ragged old clothes hanging off of him. Acrylic modeling paste is pretty good for this. You can uh, make it kind of hang down. It dries fast. Good for ragged clothes. I don't know if I would use it for, you know, clothes that weren't ragged. As it starts to dry, you can make little bits hanging off. There we go, like that. All right, let him dry for a second. Well, more than a second, a few minutes. While I wait for Mr. Bones to dry, I'm gonna do a little bit more work on the roof. 
I've uh, cut a couple of strips of acetate for the clear story windows up here, but I want the glazing to look purple just like it does in the excursion cars I built. So next step is I'm going to spray some Super 77 adhesive, a light coat on the back of this glazing. And then I'll lay it down on top of this construction paper and cut it out. I think that's how I did it last time. I can't remember. Now I can just glue these in with a little bit of Zap Canopy glue. This Zap Canopy glue is great stuff. Um, if you haven't picked up a bottle, I highly recommend it for all of your glazing needs. I don't uh, get anything for saying that. I just like the product. I could leave the roof, you know, shiny like that, but it doesn't really match the look and feel of the rest of the car. I kind of like it. It looks like a coffin a little bit, but... <laughs> um, so I'm going to cover the roof with a sort of look like a, a rolled roofing or canvas roofing. And I'm going to use some gaff tape. This is black gaffer's tape right here. It's cloth tape. Very handy stuff. And I'm going to cut this into some four foot wide strips. If you go to buy some black gaffer's tape, make sure you get the stuff that's black all the way through. There's stuff out there pretending to be gaffer tape, which is uh, actually white on the inside and just black on one side. That's no good. You want the real stuff. I usually do the lower part of the clear story roof first and then do the center part when this is done. Come back and overlap that by about six inches, I think, six scale inches. I want to get about halfway down the roof. I want to switch gears and then start back the other way from the other side. And that way, when you meet in the middle, the final piece will be more or less in the center. When I fold this over the side, I really only want enough to cover this edge. Otherwise, it might interfere with the uh, removability or the fit, I should say, of the roof itself, and I don't want that. For the upper part of the roof, I want to pre-cut the strips to about three quarters of an inch or three scale feet wide. The tape does a pretty good job of sticking it to the plastic roof, but if any of the pieces start to come up at all, you can just go in, you know, with a a drop of cyanoacrylate under there and it'll uh, hold it down. One reason I like this gaff tape so much for roofing is that it takes weathering really nicely since it's cloth. It's got a nice texture built into it. So you can dry brush on it like I'm doing here with some uh, pewter gray. Now I'll go back over all of that with some gray chalks, some black soot right down the middle, and finally just a little light blue. I'll hit that with my clear matte finish. Now I can't think of any reason why I shouldn't go ahead and glue the body to the frame. I'm sure I'll come up with a reason later. And now, I can glue the steps on. And we have the final nut bolt washer castings. There you go. I hit Mr. Bones here with some white primer. And now I'm going to go back and... Uh, paint on his raggedy clothes. I'm going to give him a blue uniform, what's left of a blue uniform. So maybe he was a conductor. Maybe he still is. I should probably mention that uh, Mr. Bones here is a figure from 
mini prints. Most of the figures on the Gruesome Gulch layout come from uh, miniprints.com. Check them out. Great stuff. Before I put Mr. Bones on the platform, I think it's actually time for trucks and couplers. These are some good old uh, KD number fives. The trick is you tighten these down pretty much all the way. And then back it off about a quarter turn. And then the, the coupler will self-center. The same thing with the trucks. You know, tighten it all the way down, then back it off a quarter turn so they swivel freely. I rearranged uh, the limbs, the arms, on Mr. Bones here so he could be uh, holding the brake wheel and waving. Creepy. Now I'm doing the final weathering pass with some colored shocks, mostly uh, gray, black, light blue. Fade that lettering back a little bit. Tie everything together. All right, now I'll get a clear coat on that. My plan for this car was for it to run primarily on the lower loop of the Gruesome Gulch layout, so let's go see how it looks running through the depths of Cadaver Caverns. And that's a wrap on the Creepy Combine build. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell so you'll see more from Thunder Mesa Studio. And you can also follow us over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and want to show your support, you can do what these nice folks did and go over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.